We're back on the bench to do the final um, parts of the install related to um, putting the what uh, another YouTuber uh, named as the sandwich. Um, in this case, all I'm going to do is work on soldering. And remember, I said keep the wires. This is exactly why. Each of these wires you can reuse. Um, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the little guy through. Um, we're going to tin up each of these connections. And uh, we'll do the three, hopefully, uh, this is in good camera view. Alright, so we've uh, tinned up the three leads um, and what we're going to do now is add her up Flip this over and make sure that we did indeed get a good connection. It looks like it. So, again, the same sort of thing, and this is super tiny work. And I do apologize if my hand gets in the way. Um, I am right handed and And then double check the other side, that looks perfect. And we got one more to do. And push that to the side. This is the this is the money the money pin. The last one's always the most difficult in my mind. Is you've got the least amount of room. And of course I didn't get it to flow right in. This one is tight. So let's do the best job you can. There you go. Slide that puppy in. Now, as I had commented, this is from the Loft Hobbies. Um, I, I was shot. I was just looking to get a few more X4R receivers for these builds and uh, lo and behold they had one without pins and without the covering. I'm like well why wouldn't I order that versus the standard? So uh, we've attached the three pins that we need. Um, again keeping in mind ground, positive, and your signal. And in case you're curious um, you can tell negative positive signal and as the packaging says it's your bottom lead which is this far row so it's these three pins that you're worried about the one closest to the box is your signal pin and then it goes positive and negative negative is always the four center pins keep that in mind and that'll help you with the negative um, so now we're going to um, attach the, well, we're not going to attach yet, but we're going to trim up the uh, wire so that we can create the, um, 
the uh, the sandwich. As another YouTuber called it. Sorry for the reach. I need my strippers. Okay, now I'm one for always pretending, so uh, you could not pretend, but I think you're kind of foolish if you don't. So, what we're going to do is this is going to because this is the back of the receiver. Remember, your pins are your front. So we're going to be drawing this wire across this way with that pin. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that a stab. And it's fun trying to get these things to stay in position for you. So apologies in advance if uh, my hands get in the way. Um, so, I don't want to melt any of the other wires, so I'm trying to keep them out of the way. There you go, right there. Just a quick dab will do that. So, when we make the combination, we're going to make the sandwich like so, and you'll be in good position have a very tight little sandwich. You could probably fit this in one. Um, again, we'll go put some double-sided tape in between. Um, and the next thing we got to do is, um, and I'm going to leave a little extra room because I want to be able to basically go like this. And you can see how they, they kind of curl back in. Um, so I'm going to snip right there. Now, remember, <laughs> this is important, uh, your center four pins are your negative. This is your positive. And remember, this is your five volt rail in the center, and this outer one is your negative. So, we're going to go ahead and strip these two wires, tin them up, and connect that up. So the main difference between my method and the other sandwich method is they used pins. Um, personally, I think if you do pins, uh, you're, you're setting yourself up for, in my mind, what's a more difficult repair um, when the time comes. And I do say when. Um, my experiences with these things is you're gonna crash them. <laughs> You're gonna crash them a lot. Um, fly, crash, repair is uh, a lot of people's motto. Um, and it is fun to repair these things. Um, they are quite durable too, so it's not like uh, you're gonna tear them up. I mean, just the other day, I was flying in snow, and uh, I mean, I, I planted it. The uh, camera angle that I have on that warp quad was uh, literally zero degree uh, tilt, and I got going. I bet you I was probably 40% uh, or 40 degree tilt, and uh, man, it was it was a nightmare to fly. So um, what we're going to do here is it's not going to be the easiest. I may use my, uh, my needle nose if I can find them. You position the positive and remember and basically you can see how the sandwich will start working so in this case um, we basically I had putting flexible wire and using double-sided tape, we'll be able to take these things apart um, in the future, which is important. Um, 
at least from my experience, uh, things don't always work the way you want it, and it's good to have some flexibility. Um, the last thing we're going to have to do is put in some uh, signal wires for the uh, ESCs. Um, so we're not going to attach this quite yet, but you kind of get the, the idea. And uh, the last thing we would do is add some double-sided tape in between the uh, two chips. And basically, um, you're going to have your sandwich just like that. Um, so a neat way to do it. Um, very simplistic. It'll power your receiver. Uh, and right now, if you want to do it at this point, you can actually uh, power up the board via the USB cable and go ahead and do your binding process, um, which is just basically, you know, hold down the um, bind pin, hook up your cable, you know, and have your Tyrannus on, on bind mode, and this should go green within a few seconds. Then let go, shut, cycle both of them, um, and you should get a solid green light. Uh, we'll do that in just a minute. All right, we're going to bind our receiver to the transmitter, and if you enter the first page um, and go to bind. should start beeping at you. And then hook up, find a position that you can grab your, this isn't the easiest thing to do. You wanna get this little pin held as you plug in your Afro Mini and You'll see that both lights were lit. Let me do that again because it was kind of poorly done on the camera. See? And then it flashes, let go, disconnect, take it off bind. Plug in, and you should go instant green. And you're ready to go. Telemetry lost. Again, Telemetry if you get too recovered. close, <laughs> if, if you're having trouble, um, that's one of the things to keep in mind too. If you're having trouble with it connecting, you may be too close to your uh, transmitter, uh, so back it up if you need to. Um, in the end, uh, <laughs> it gets a little touchy with you when you're within one foot. Um, but it's that quick and easy to bind this. Um, you know, it's nothing too difficult, and you're really, uh, you know, solder up the the uh, ESC signal leads, the grounds, and you're ready to go flying. So. Um, you know, that kind of wraps up our uh, three-part overlay related to the Afro Mini 32 as well as the X4R uh, and creating uh, the sandwich that uh, ultimately will um, navigate your quad. I mean, that's this is the, the core heart of your quad. Um, and uh, I can tell you, you'll be happy with this board. Uh, it's very um, powerful responsive and um, for its size you're not going to find something lighter and more effective so it's a good option if you're trying to go for a light build um, so this will end our series as far as uh, the uh, flight controller and x4r um, we still have a few more um, items left on the orion 155x build um, including putting in the cage and some final uh, wrap up related to just kind of tidying up the, the build and, and whatnot. And uh, after we do the build, I'll try to get some footage up of uh, some of its maiden's flights. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe below, please. 
And uh, any comments, questions, things like that that I can help you with, just leave them in the comment section below. Thanks. So connect. You can see if you're communicating or not. All right, arm. That's why it's acting funky because it really doesn't want to be armed. <laughs> uh, so we're ready to double check our settings um, and make sure that this little uh, gem is working. Already, um, you can see that uh, we, we have input uh, before the throttle and the auxiliary were up. Um, so your auxiliary one channel, um, I've set this up, even though it's a three position switch, a lot of times I'll accidentally hit it once, but it's rare that I'll hit it all the way down. Um, then your throttle, you want to just double check. In fact, the settings are, are moving all the way. Check your yaw. Check your pitch. Check your roll. And again, that's pretty much it for this particular screen. The other thing that you want to do, <coughs> make sure your, your switches are working the way that you want. In this case, like I said, I have a three position switch that only the high um, will actually activate the arm. And then over here, on the very far side, I have low, medium, and high. And you just want to double check that things are working um, so that when you're ready to install this, you basically um, know the stuff is working. Uh, that's it. If, if you're getting all that to work, you're golden, you're ready to install this, uh, you know, put the signal wires on the ESC, hook up the grounds, and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, so hopefully you found this educational. Um, this took me, I hate to say this, it, it's a little sheepish, but uh, it took me a week and a half to figure out this far. Um, it was very frustrating. So I'm hoping some people can benefit off of this and, and ultimately uh, you can see some of the, the um, honestly, the ease that it is to hook this up. Uh, once you know how to do it, what to do, it's actually really easy. Um, and uh, this is definitely one of the combinations I'm gonna use in most of my quads. The X4R S Bus is really responsive, has very low lag. I've, I've noticed that right off the bat with the Warp Quad compared to the D4R. Um, maybe it's in my mind, but man, that seems a whole lot more responsive than uh, the D4R uh, too. So again, if you could, subscribe to my channel. Um, I would really appreciate it. If you have comments, leave them below. Something I didn't cover, something that I should have covered, a setting I missed in base flight, whatever it is, let me know. Um, for the most part, I tried to, to get what uh, my common adjustments are, but um, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this educational.